It's Scott Garlis at Stansberry Research. I'm here at the 2019 Alliance Conference in Las Vegas. I'm here with Jim Grant, editor of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. Mr. Grant. Hey, Scott, how are you? I'm, I'm well. Jim, by the way. <laughs> Jim, yeah. thank you very much for being here. <laughs> sure. Um, so, first question, this flood of liquidity that seems to be coming at the system, what's going on? Well, you know, people talk about uh, the absence of liquidity. Liquidity means basically money. It means the capacity to transact in securities at more or less continuous prices. So they say, yeah, there's not enough liquidity. Can't the Fed do something? Well, maybe the Treasury is doing too much. Maybe the problem is not the lack of so-called liquidity, but from the, from the point of view of the money hose, maybe the problem is too many bonds to be financed. I mean, if the if interest rates were perhaps more attractive to long-term investors, people would take these securities and put them like in a safe deposit box. You can, I don't think you can do that more with, with, with pay. I don't think they have any paper anymore. But you could conceptually put them away and not have to finance them overnight. But the demand for overnight financing strikes me not necessarily as a function of the, of the paucity of liquidity, but rather as an excess of what they call a collateral, meaning bills, notes, and bonds of the United States government. We're running trillion dollar deficits at the time of supposedly high macroeconomic cotton. Well said. What would you view as the current exit plan or the correct exit plan for global central banks? Well, that's different. <laughs> I think the exit plan, the de facto exit plan, will be um, a great big money gush. Uh, you know, years, years ago, uh, Ben Bernanke said, we could raise interest rates in 15 minutes if we wanted to. Well, it turns out that after years of very low rates, people become habituated, and they build up uh, uh, debt, and they need to fund that debt, and they build up leverage. They, need want, they want more of that because it helps them make money, and uh, high rates don't really go with all of that. So the central banks are kind of stuck, I think, and I think the, the way out will be through uh, much more aggressive uh, credit creation. Interesting. And then lastly, um, what would global financial markets look like today if the major central banks hadn't flooded the system with money in 2008? Uh, first and most emphatically, we don't know. But secondly, conjecturally, I think it might actually have been a good thing uh, in the long term, to be sure. In the short run, it would have been rather terrifying. But what we have had these past 10 years is uh, more and more intervention uh, to perpetuate more and more excess, I say, in the, especially in the world's credit markets. You know, $15 trillion of securities priced to yield less than nothing is not a sign of ruddy good health. No. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's kind of scary, and it seems like when the Fed tried to raise rates again, it just didn't work. Uh, well, correct. And the, EC, the, 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 uh, the European Central Bank almost makes look, the Fed look like an orthodox, old-fashioned institution. Uh, ECB is very aggressive, and, and uh, they, they kind of threaten to, uh, to mow down every single positive yield still dominated in euros. It's, it's hard to believe uh, the interest rates in Italy are lower than they are in the U.S. A lot lower. Yeah, crazy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome, Scott. Nice to talk to you. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more updates.